Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We are a year-round talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, and theater. And today we are so lucky to be joined by Jonathan Tucker, who's currently starring in the NBC series Debris. Um, you know, and and the thing that I wanted to dive into first is obviously there's the sci-fi and, and this great kind of mysticism within the entire series as a whole. And so when you were jumping into initially what was just the pilot and only had those first scripts, what were the conversations that were really useful for you to have? and the questions to ask about the bigger picture for you to understand your character? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, when I sat down to meet with the showrunner originally, we really sketched out what that first season would look like and the thing that's unique about some of the best minds in sci-fi and probably great storytellers in general, but particularly when you're building out a world and um, plot is so critical to, um, you know, the, such a critical engine to the, to the production, you want to plan out, you know, seasons ahead. So Joel and I had those conversations and then it becomes really a partnership of building the character within that context. And that's something that, um, he's been, uh, gracious in allowing me to take responsibility of. And obviously one of the things that you've had to become incredibly adept at with, with your extensive TV experience is creating ideas of who a character is, giving them really strong elements of backstory so that you know exactly who they are, but at the same time knowing that you very frequently have to pivot a lot of those details and adjust details as the writers come up with new elements of them as well. Um, and so for this character in particular, what were the details that you wanted to be really steadfast in and what were the spaces where you allowed yourself to leave a little bit more openness? Well, these are great questions. These are great questions. Now, I oftentimes think about characters as um, vehicles, like literal automobiles, and you build them to spec for each production. And you know that you're, you know, you, you know the terrain that you have that you can see, and you're building for the terrain that you anticipate based on the terrain that you see and the conversations that you've had about what's happening around the next bend. But, um, you know, that car needs to adjust uh, as weather, you know, changes, uh, as new scripts come in, as recurring characters that you thought would be around for multiple seasons end up becoming regulars on other shows. And you have to figure out new ways in which to, um, uh, to tell the story. Um, but you're, you're dead on, you know, there's certain, there's a certain in, uh, integral parts of that engine and that automobile that can't change. Um, so for this character specifically, um, understanding that vulnerability and empathy are um, powerful tools to use um, to succeed will we'll, we'll, we'll constantly be a part of um, his understanding of the world, uh, his experience overseas um, uh, in the armed services, and that uh, journey will, will always be a part of the character. Um, he, you know, he's an execution guy, so gets, you know, gets the job done and um, won't be deterred by any hindrances. If I'm going to go back to that analogy in the road, uh, he's going to he's going to complete the mission. And then there's a deep um, insecurity about uh, about fathers and um, male leadership and roles in his life. So within that prism, um, yeah, I, I don't see I, I, I see the the paradigm um, being very clear for, for, for Brian. And with one of the details that you just mentioned with the fact that he has served in the armed forces and, and done a tour in Afghanistan, how did you take that detail, not just in terms of how that impacts him emotionally and his relationships, but actually for the work that he's doing, how that informs the way that he walks into ro to rooms and like pays such keen attention to detail and where his eye is drawn. Yeah, well. I mean, th those are the practical elements of characters. I mean, they're spiritual elements um, and there's practical ones. And I think that uh, when you are playing somebody who has been in the special forces or has got some sort of law enforcement training or investigative work, when you know that this character has gone through a certain kind of training, um, there's, there's a physical um, requirement that is, um, that is uh, critical 
to playing the character. Um, so, you know, I, I think one of the things that I've learned over the past 10 years, particularly, is to bifurcate in my language. And I guess in my actions, the difference between working and employment. And you can always be working. So there's skill sets that you just want to have. And I was, I was actually thinking about this in the hair and makeup chair talking. You know, because these these professionals in the in the hair makeup wardrobe departments, they're, these are veterans, and they've kind of seen all of the same elements that I have, and probably even more. Um, we're like, what are the things that actors really you come up against that you should see if you can get ahead of before you get the job? You know, and things like horseback riding, or you know, use with firearms, obviously accents, but then other things like you know, you want to be able to know how to swim. Um, you want to be able, if you can get scuba certified, it's like a helpful thing to, to have. Um, there was a handful of these other, uh, you know, fight choreography, you know, just like boxing or some sort of martial arts, um, driving, driving manual. Then there's things you don't really think about, but if you're, you know, an actor in New York city, um, learn how to drive a stick shift. Uh, these things like come up consistently. So when you start to think about the journey of an actor and it extrapolates out, to anything you're doing, there's a difference between working and being employed and you want to be as prepared as you possibly can. You want to be anticipating as much as you can. Um, so, you know, my work with firearms is really important for the character. Um, knowing how to clear a room, um, knowing how to work with a, a, a team, you know, a tactical team uh, in an enclosed environment. All those things are really helpful and you don't want to be learning them you try not to be learning new skills the moment you get the job. Uh, you, you hope that you can lean on the experience and the work that you've done before that point. Yeah. And it sounds like in the way that you construct characters, sometimes it starts with a really kind of, I, you know, a, a, de a really, really minute detail at the beginning, like when you were on Parenthood and it was the character's hair that was part of the starting point for developing and understanding who he was going to be. So with Brian on this show, what was that initial starting point and spark for you with him? Yeah, I, so I, I, I um, you know, I think really starting actually after Parenthood, right around there, I realized um, that you need a process, like a consistent process or crucible in which to run through to build these characters um, because hoping for inspiration, which I used to do like when I was younger, I used to be like, Oh, when I get the right boots, the right shoes or jacket or the hair or, you know, but it's so that's just, you're, you're, you're on, it's so whimsical and you're kind of hoping that the right element comes in the accent or whatever, but that you can't be hoping that the inspiration comes. You've got to kind of be working towards it. And um, so now I've got, I feel like, you know, I've got an airtight process, whether it turns out airtight characters every time, um, you know, is to be determined. But, and by that, I mean to say like, I'm just very comfortable with the fact that there's going to be a character or performance that simply doesn't work. You know, the magic is in, is found in trying things that, you know, potentially could fail. Um, so, but the process for me, for me is um, outside of the general work of trying to prepare, which is also being in class and reading plays and, and watching performances and um, working on accents and physical work is that you, you, um, you know, I love working with like animal work and element work, um, which is Alexander technique and, everybody I know who went to trauma school is like, yeah, yeah, I did that back in trauma school. I'm like, well, but they haven't done it in 20 years. And it's just a great way to get you back into a different, into your body. Um, Cause we all move differently and eat differently. And as you said, you know, enter a room and see things differently. Um, you know, I work with uh, a really interesting um, coach um, named John Marklin, who is much, is very involved in kind of the Jungian subconscious um, dive into, into the character and into yourself, dream work sort of stuff. Um, you know, I'll try anything. So if it sounds hippy dippy at first, yeah, I'm a Bostonian. I think I was averse to a lot of this, uh, this, a lot of the, the parts of this process before I, I really found myself. Um, but if it works, it works. And it has for me because it gives me a consistent way to build, build the automobile. Um, you know, work with great coaches, great physical people. And um, you kind of, you kind of, 
bring all of those elements to the different and respective uh, people that are hired by production, hair, makeup, wardrobe, um, production designers, and you try to communicate as much as you can and, and everybody, you know, begins to build on top of or in conjunction with what you're doing. And on this show and working with Ryan Steele, you know, she also started out in theater and so has worked in, in a variety of different mediums as well. What were the ways in which you found that your styles really complemented each other or perhaps some of the ways where you worked a little bit differently, but it actually was really cohesive, particularly because so many of the scenes throughout the show were two handers with the two of you? Yeah, I mean, Ryan is a um, consummate professional. She shows up prepared. She has choices. She knows her character. She knows what she wants to do. She's open to the environment. She's open to the discovering new things, to playing, to trying things that are not kind of on the, the game plan. Um, and those are just basics that you hope to get from a, a partner. Um, she's a joy to be with. She's respectful of the people um, on set and the, and the crew. Um, and she wants to make people feel comfortable and, and feel like their voices can be heard because ultimately, you know, we're, we're, this is a team effort. And if you don't think that's true, um, you know, you're denying the science of the fact that a boom operator is physically displacing, um, you know, uh, um, air in the, in the actual room. So it is a different environment when there is somebody there. And uh, in that respect, um, I think we really complement each other. Yeah. And the dynamic between them is is interesting in respect to the fact that it's not the first day that they're working together when we meet them on screen, but it also is a very new relationship. So they're sure. still kind of feeling each other out. Um, and what did you think about in terms of the spaces where Brian would really trust her character and the spaces where he's still got a little bit of a wall, wall up? Because obviously throughout the season, that's gradually going to shift and change and evolve a lot. You know, um nobody has all the right tools for a job and the faster you accept the fact that they're, you know, that everybody has something to offer, that um, everybody has a story to tell, everybody has something to share on a side note, you know, you're a lot less boring than you think you are. Um, when you open your heart and then your practical experience to that fact, um, you recognize that success can only come when you, um, when you play in a, on a team. And I think she, her character recognizes um, as quickly as I do that um, the enemy is uh, so, is willing to sacrifice so much uh, to succeed that if we don't trust each other, uh, we won't, uh, we don't have any possibility of, of winning the day. Mm -hmm. And I love that moment where they're on the plane and they're having conversations and she's talking about her dad and the fact that he worked in a similar field and, and makes the point of, but I didn't get this job because of who my parents were. And he just looks at her completely steadfast and is like, I believe you. Um, and so was that something that was always very important to Joel that they really see each other as equals and as comrades? Because it feels like external forces want them to be competitive with each other, but their relationship with each other is, is really built on a mutual respect. Um, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think that's what Joel's um, intentions are. It's certainly in my intentions. Um, it's a fun relationship to have um, on a show because there is real romance between these two characters, but it's not a love romance uh, or, a, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend romance. I don't know what the word is to describe that, but there's a, a real meaningful friendship that develops and in that friendship, they end up having to sacrifice some of the things that they thought were most important to them. Um, and if you look at the course of the first season, it's really like the log line of every Pixar film, which is woman, you know, young, young woman trying to find her father and then young guy saying goodbye to his father. Um, it doesn't have to be the, the, the sexual roles there, but, or the gender roles, but, you know, finding your parents, losing your parents. Um, and in that, you know, in, in that, uh, we really have to come together and lean on each other. Yeah. 
In that same conversation, there's there's a myriad of details that tell us a lot about his particular mindset and the way that he thinks about things. Um, there's that great line where he's essentially saying, you know, this might be the end of humanity, and he seems very at peace with it. Um, so when you were going through the script, particularly for the pilot initially, what were some of the minute details that you pulled out that really gave you a sense of, of where he was emotionally with everything that he's dealing with in the day-to-day -day of this work that he's approaching? That's an excellent question. Um, probably, um, probably that's a great question. Boy, what are some of my new details that would help me understand kind of the, the, the level and depth of this sort of thing? I, I think it's probably in like, in, 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 you know, it's funny because it's such a big world, this idea that there's artificial there's there's the intelligent life outside of earth which makes you question everything um and our pl really our place on earth and why are we doing anything you know why what why does it matter like, you can be so nihilistic about it um but the thing that ends up really being what's so important to brian are these super small moments which is a father re um, literally finding his daughter again, after uh, years of her being um, lost or um, a, uh, you know, um, somebody reconnecting with their sister for, for, for the first time. Um, it's really people connecting and families reuniting or um, overcoming some extraordinary personal spiritual obstacle and in observing that um, that repair of wounds and Brian begins to start to heal himself. And it's, it's, there's these super small observational moments. I mean, in the pilot, recognizing that I can't handle the emotional vulnerability of um, the young woman who's lost her brother. Um, and then having to reconcile that. It's like, basically there's alien technology that's, shaking the whole world uh, upside down, but it's really like you know, a one young woman being emotional in the living room that ends up bringing Brian back to his truth. And in working on a pilot in general, it's it's such an opportunity for exploration and, and trying different things. And everybody on the team is really trying to figure out what's the direction and what's the tone and what's the voice of this show going to be if it runs for 10 years. Um, so within that, were, were there times and moments where you all were trying different potential directions for your character or just tonally what that was going to look like? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, I was going to push back initially, which is you're always doing that every day on set because... Um, you're, it's essentially a rehearsal every day. It's not theater. You don't, you know, you're trying out things that totally could work and might not work. And um, you're really trying to play on set because the person you're trying to please is the editor. You know, you want to give the editor all of this different material to work with and to, to build a performance and tell the story. But it's particularly acute um, and it's maybe um, a larger dart to throw into the dartboard where you're gonna to start to stick other holds um, with the pilot. And, um, you know, it's always a little scary because again, every episode, every scene is another, you know, another handhold on this kind of mountain climb. So you wanna make sure you stick it um, correctly. Um, but I don't, you know, we, we, we were pretty dialed in, I think on the pilot, Joel was, did a fabulous job of really, um, getting us on the same page. So I think we experimented as much in the pilot as, as we're doing now in terms of the day-to-day -day work, but the, the hope, and we only got three weeks of it done with, with the pandemic, three out of four weeks. So it was a lot more than anybody else, but uh, it wasn't the complete pilot. And I, and I think after the pilot, it was really about dialing in the things that we really, that really, we really liked and that really worked. 
And within that day-to-day experimentation that you were just talking about with all the subsequent episodes as well, um, you know, obviously with television, things are moving incredibly fast. You're working multiple days, you're doing pickup days where you're jumping between different scenes. So what are the ways that the directors and, and the creatives on the show really mm-hmm. create an environment that gives you that space that you, Ryan, and the rest of the cast need to be able to access all of those different myriads of spaces that you could potentially well, I mean, take in? You have to make, you got to make your own space, you know, it's like you have to be responsible for yourself. It, it, the idea that um, you, know, you have to take just that full um, ownership over as much of the performance as you possibly can, which includes all the practical stuff on the day. Um, and I think good showrunners like Joel and like the other creative people that are on the production um, are not operating from a place of fear, um, which then manifests itself as ego. Um, and in doing, in, in operating from a sense of, we know what the story is and we know who we are as artists, uh, by we, I mean the other, you know, the other creative people who are helping to put together the show and helping to dictate what the guardrails are on set. Um, they turn over that, you know, responsibility to the actors. You also have to come in, you know, you've got to show that you know what you're doing, um, which means every day you got to be prepared and you have to be willing to pivot and, you know, a whole script I think needs to be um, needs to be ready to access um, when you begin day one because you just never know what's going to flip and change. Uh, if they say, "Oh, we're going to go onto the scene," it's not on the call sheet, that's not on the sides, but you have to get it done. You know, this afternoon, I think you have to be ready to do that as an actor. And in working on on this show in particular, compared to other projects that you've done, what have been the unique challenges that you've faced in really just discovering this character or, or shooting? Yeah, episodes? I mean, look, COVID's been a bit of a challenge, um, and we've done everything we can to continue to mitigate that that, that impact on the work. Um, trying to make expositional the expositional elements of telling the story compelling um, has been challenging but not um but not an obstacle um and uh i think trying to find the right you know trying to provide enough training wheels for the audience for like the first half of the season to get them on board before we start like really ripping (laughs) ripping apart uh the insides uh and when it gets a lot more fun i mean the first like five five episodes are great fun but after that the show really that, um, forgive me the pun, but you know, it takes off. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, being comfortable with what the show is and what it will be has been, um, you know, a bit of a balance. Yeah. But it's been a very, it's really been a wonderful production to be a part of both from, you know, from the scripts to the, to the people. And when you were signing on for this project, you know, whenever you sign on to a TV project, it's not just signing on for the pilot, it's signing on for the potential of, you Mm -hmm. know, two years, five years, 10 years. So for this project in particular, what was it that had you so steadfast that this was potentially a project and a character that you could see yourself, you know, facing for 10 years and working with if, if that ends up being the case? Yeah, I don't know about 10 years. I think, you know, five years was probably a good, good circle. Um, I think I've seen how quickly my life goes by. Um, I've got two um, twins and I've got a fabulous wife. I feel like I just started dating and all of a sudden we've been married for 10 years. Um, I mean that in the highest compliment to, to her, to our, our, our marriage. Um, and on the other hand, I've been able to glean from kind of my elders that you have a long career too, uh, to kind of put things in perspective. And um I think getting to do a kind of serialized um, drama sci-fi show on network primetime is becoming more um, challenging. And so this was an opportunity to do that. And and, um, I wanted to give that a shot and be a part of um, a network fan driven um, world for a good chunk of time. And, the person that I knew could pull that off technically was Joel. Um, and maybe, I don't want to say more important, but um, as important for sure. I'm also at this point in my life where like, I don't want to work with people who are jerks. 
and I don't want to work with people who um, don't understand that the process of telling stories is collaborative and that we need to trust each other and that you need to try things that don't work and that the post-production is where it all happens. So if things don't work on the day, um, you just don't use them. That's fantastic. I can't wait to see the rest of the episodes of this season. And thank you so much for talking with us, especially in the midst of production on a weekend. Well, I got to tell you, these are some of, those are some of the best questions I've been asked in a long time. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's, it's fun to think about because, you know, sometimes these interviews actually really help you know, the actors actually truly, you know, dial into some of the work that we're trying to do day in and day out. Because as I said, you know, you are building this car and there is more terrain coming. And the joy of working in TV versus films is you get a longer time to drive the car and you get better at it and you can drive different terrain. You know? So it's like you get all of the benefits of the deep dive of theater, but, um, and then all of the fun of like working in production of, of a film, but in TV, if it's good, you're getting all this new material to play with. Um, and an interview like this is helpful in, in that process. And, uh, and that's rare. That means so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You as well.